So lately, I've been talking a lot about the upcoming election, uh, right? The big uh, presidential election between uh, President Trump, right, and uh, presidential elect uh, or presidential candidate uh, Joe Biden. So the last video I talked about, right, uh, was just a little background about uh, Joe Biden. You know where he's from, what he's done so far. You know the multiple jobs that he's had, what he's tried to accomplish, and all that, right? And so this time, you know, I'm gonna do the same thing for uh, President Donald Trump, okay? Because it's important that we uh, pay pay attention to what's going on in the election, right? 2020, it's a huge election year, okay? Probably one of the biggest ones we've had in quite a while, honestly. And, you know, it's one of those things that's important for all of us to talk about. It's all important for all of us to research, look into, uh, get ourselves acclimated with all the information about it. Because, you know, it, it's important, right? And, uh, and like I said in my last video about Joe Biden, before I really got into his history uh, a little bit, was... You know, I really feel like too, like we have a lot of great freedoms here in the United States, right? And uh, we've, we're really, really blessed with all of the uh, rights and freedoms and all that that we have. And right now, uh, with everything going on, with everything coming up in the future, you know, some like two of our really important fr uh, rights that we have is the freedom to vote and the freedom of speech. So it's really important that, you know, we all uh, utilize that really this year, okay? Um, so, uh, uh, the last video in this video, I always think of that scene in the office uh, where Creed, you know, they're talking about, you know, somebody uh, that uh, works in the office, you know, they were, they won the lottery, they all quit, and they all went and, you know, wasted all the money. Um, but the character Creed Bratton, he just steps up in front of the camera and he's like, hey, you know, I already won the lottery, right? I was born in the US of A, baby. <laughs> and, and I think it's great. It's such a perfect scene. And honestly, it really applies to all this stuff going on. So again, freedom of uh, freedom, freedom to vote, freedom of speech, uh, two incredibly important freedoms. Um, and especially nowadays, I I I, I want to uh, give a shout out to all uh, the folks that are around my age, right, right around their twenties. Um, you know, because I really feel like our younger generations tend to for, tend to forget, right, that wait, we can actually vote now. So uh, this year, I really uh, encourage uh, all of the folks right around my age. I mean, this is a big vote right here, right? So research it, look into it, go vote, okay? Utilize that freedom and have just, you know, you have the right to express your opinion in this, right? So might as well use it, right? Go for the gold and be able to uh, put your opinion down on that ballot and, um, Take advantage of it, right? Because there's a lot of folks around the uh, around the globe um, that are trying to fight for this freedom and are, are not getting it. So let, let's let's use it big time, okay? So uh, without further ado, I want to talk a little about a little bit about uh, the current president, uh, Donald J. Trump. I will I'll talk about more of him as you know his history a little bit rather than what he's done so far uh, in his uh, president. Uh, his um current administration just you know because it'll be uh too much time and i'll i'll actually talk about that uh, at some other point okay uh just not now so donald trump is a business guy right uh business 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 uh he is known for you know his uh essentially residential uh an office park and office building, and all, right? So he's built a lot of towers around the country and casinos and office parks and office buildings, right? He's got a couple buildings in New York, uh, over in Chicago, okay? He's got, you know, um, casinos and uh, other, like, essentially resorts, like, around the country, right? Uh, and, of course, around the world as well. I know he's got, what was that, a place in Scotland or Ireland right around there. And so, you know, he's just acclimated to make having to make those tough deals in those in those tough situations where it's like no you know if you're if you're not I'm, I'm trying to do what's right here and if you're not going to give me the right thing then we do no deal at all right it's either it's either you you do what i want or nothing at all okay because he's really trying to think okay what's what's the better uh situation for the both of us how can we both get you know a, a good deal done right so uh he's he's a real estate guy right he's a he's and he's a business guy in the real estate industry which is a very tough industry to be in okay because you're constantly going back and forth with a lot of folks um and and it's it's not it's not an easy job right and it's his dad did the same thing uh his father and this is where he got 
you know, a lot of his uh, traits from was his father, uh, who was also in the real estate industry as well, but on a smaller scale, right? Because his father did a lot of um, a lot of uh, small rental properties, uh, and you know, Donald Trump uh, really had just this urge to go bigger, to go better. And that's why he started building, you know, these skyscrapers and uh, uh, within New York City, Chicago, and you know, a whole bunch of other cities around the country and around the globe. And once he once he started doing that, he's like, okay, how can I go even further, right? So it's like it's that constant mentality of how do I get bigger, how do I get better, how do I get stronger, this, that, and the other thing, right? And so that's what he did with all the casinos and all that. So. You know, and he's also known for, you know, being in some television shows and movies and, um, and he, I remember watching this one interview that he was in and he was saying how, you know, he would A, either not become president, uh, or, or not even, not even run or B, you know, not even if, if he, he, B, if you'd only run, he, like he would only run if he just had that, like, real real like strong urge to because you, you know he i don't think he really had the desire to only if you know the desperate times call for the des desperate measures sort of deal and so it got to a point where you know back in 2016 you know he, he felt like it got to a point where things at least for you know president trump right things got you know started to get out of control and he's like okay i need to get in there and i need to fix it right and you know he got in there and he the thing i admire most about president trump is that you know he doesn't he's got he's got thick skin right he doesn't really care what people say about him which is something that i'm trying to you know at least learn from him is that you know because a lot of people tend to say things about folks behind their backs and it's like they've got to be they've it's unfortunate but they got to take it and the people say things right to your face and you got to you got to some somehow manage to deal with that right and the great the the awesome thing about donald trump right is that he just it's basically like a fly swatter right he just takes a fly swatter and all the stuff that said uh, said about him he just swats it right down he's like oh whatever it doesn't matter i don't care and so, you know, the 2016 election was also a really big election, right? You got, you know, Donald Trump versus Hillary Clinton. It was a fairly tight race, too, right? Like, it was essentially back and forth. And I remember the morning uh, that they announced who the winner was, uh, you know, who the winner, uh, uh, who, who was going to become the next president. And I remember waking up that morning, like, it could, and I said to myself, like, it really could be. I like going either way, right? And so, and so I remember waking up and uh, seeing that President Trump was now officially the president, and it was it was just so interesting to see, right? Uh, it was uh, I thought it was low key kind of uh, kind of cool, kind of awesome, um, and because again, a great race, tight race, and you always gotta even in sports. Like remember, I'm a sports guy, and you gotta remember that. You know, those tight races, those tight, you know, close action uh, events are like, are ones that you got, you constantly got to remember are like, holy cow, holy cow. And so, you know, Donald Trump, you know, gets into the office and, and I'll actually start talking about uh, his uh, presidency right now, right? Because I actually got uh, a lot more time than I expected. So he gets in there, right? The... He, he, Donald Trump is known as a negotiator, as a businessman, okay, and his big idea all along, right, especially these past four years, is, you know, the United States has been ripped off for so long, for such a long period of time, that it's like, how okay, how do we get back the United States back on top, right? How do we, we've got to put uh, America first again, because... You know, we're, you know, you know getting, like letting all these deals affect, negatively affect the United States. And, you know, we're losing like tons and tons of money every year, you know, helping other countries out when we can't even help ourselves. Right. And so one of the first and honestly, one of the biggest things that Donald Trump did was like, he's like, hey, look, you know, taxes are incredibly high. And what if we take those taxes and we lower the taxes? So, and, you know, obviously a big thing right nowadays is investing, right? 
So what you want to do is you want to take your money that you save on your taxes. You want to invest that in American companies, right? Uh, like Amazon, Google, Facebook, so on and so forth, Boeing. Um, you know, you want to take that the money saved on your taxes. You want to invest it in America. And that way, you're not only increasing the amount of money you're making every year, you're also greatly benefiting these comp like these companies so that that way they can grow and they can, you know, therefore expand the American economy, right? So it's essentially one of those situations where it's like, okay, this is a win-win situation, right? I'm saving money on my taxes and therefore, you know, I can, you know, and go ahead, invest that money and therefore I'm making even more like a heck of a lot more, more money than I already was a little while ago, right? So, uh, so that was great to see, and uh, that that past that is actually working, right? And obviously nowadays, you know, it's great to see, you know, the amount of jobs, you know, that are coming back to America because that's one of the, the things, right? That's one of the things that affected America, America, for such a long period of time was that we lost a lot of, a ton of jobs, right? A ton of manufacturing jobs. So we sent all these manufacturing, you know, companies and plants and all that, right? We sent that overseas. We sent that somewhere else, so we didn't have to do it. Uh, which honestly, there, like, therefore decreased the amount of people working, right? The amount of jobs went down by a lot, right? And the, the manufacturing production, therefore, you know, decreased our economy because not as many countries and not as many governments and not as many people are buying products for the from the u.s therefore de decreasing our our exports and you know our gdp is going you know going down so it's like okay and that's another issue that he had to face and we had to therefore come up with is like okay we want a lot of those jobs to come back to the united states we want a lot more governments to say hey we want to buy products from you rather than somewhere else and so and that, that's what we had to figure out as well and so, and so that's what, and obviously the uh, coronavirus has affected things a little bit, right? Because essentially everything came to a halt, right? Everything came to a complete stop just so that, so that we, that way we can, you know, affect, so that way we didn't spread anything, right? Because we don't want to uh, increase the amount of uh, illnesses in the United States, right? Because it's already at such a high skyrocketing, skyrocketing rate. And, you know, the slower that goes, the better. And so that's uh, essentially the last point I want to make today uh, before I get into everything, everything else uh, in a separate video, right? Because we're, com we're coming to a close, okay? So this is the last point I'm going to make is the whole COVID-19 epidemic, right? Obviously, this was, you know, disastrous, not only around the globe, but essentially here in the United States, right? We had, it was essentially a punch to the gut, right? This was, this COVID-19 epidemic you know, it took a major blow to uh, folks here within the United States. And, you know, not only uh, due to the illnesses, but to the economy as well. Because, you know, you look at the hotel industry, the airline industry, uh, gas, uh, oil. Uh, oil is huge, right? Oil got, like, the price of oil went down a ton. So you literally look at everything, and everything just got destroyed, essentially, right? And restaurants, too, right? I know here in Massachusetts, there's a ton of restaurants that are closing down because they weren't able to support themselves, you know, during the COVID-19 epidemic because people couldn't couldn't go to them and people couldn't leave, right? And so, you know, it's it's tough being able in a position and especially in a leadership role to that you know to that level of importance because it's like, hey, you gotta you gotta juggle a lot. Okay, you gotta you gotta shut everything down. You gotta make sure everybody's okay. But uh, again, you you gotta in a way you gotta look at the United States of America like a business, right? It's like yeah, I, the most important asset to your business is the people, right? So once you get to a point where the people are starting to do a lot better than they are, the uh, the people are doing a lot better than they at least were, you know, then you gotta open the business back up. And I think. And obviously, obviously, no, no such leader is perfect, right? Um, and you know, it was definitely one of those juggling acts that President Trump had to deal with. And it's, and obviously, he had a lot of other, you know, top, you know, health aides, top officials around him. And then he, you know, he also had the governors of every state to uh, work with and, you know, get data from. Him. He's like, okay, you know, 
And I, I really I think it was good. Like the plan that the United States came out with was where, you know, each state opens back up at their own pace, at their own structure. So that way, you know, you're, you're starting to get that heartbeat back again, right? You're starting to get some movement. So that way, you know, over the span of a couple months, uh, the government's back uh, and ready to rock and roll again. And, you know, uh, the, it, it was a tough situation to be in, right? Because obviously none of this, none of, no, none of us expected it. And so it's all about taking action, taking action immediately. And I think, you know, I think President Trump handled that really well. And it's like, you know, I always try to think, like, if I was in that situation, what would I have done, right? And I think I think he just handled I know I know I would be panicking and be like, oh, my goodness, what? what? And to think that, you know, our economy was such a great economy. And then all of a sudden, with a snap of a finger, it just went kapoof, right? What, you, what we just spent, you know, the last few years building just got destroyed. And um, and so I truly believe that our government's going to get back to, uh, and rocking and rolling here pretty soon. It's going to get rebuilt from the ground up. And, you know, so obviously, like I said, I'll be talking about this a lot more uh, later on. But I just wanted to, you know, give some, you know, give some points for you to think about, some points for you to talk about. Um... And, you know, just, just, you know, because this election is going to be really important, you know, for us and for our future. So if you haven't seen the last video, it was a brief, you know, focal point on Joe Biden. Uh, you know, what he, like I said, what he was about. So if you want to go take a peek uh, at that, go, please do, uh, because it's going to be fun. It's going to be a great election. It's going to be a great debate. Um, obviously, two uh, very well-known people here in the United States. Uh, two incredibly powerful guys, right? And, you know, make sure you pay attention to it, all right? So, uh, so without further ado, let's get ready to rock and roll, folks.